Zenele bo pati nguye lanu Wae tu kabe Pampanji mama o Zenele bo pati nguye lanu Kase ye Ongwe I am by name Honorable Bogonatani Arisuke From Way West contesting for the Beno State House of Assembly to represent the good people of Bowen State constituency. Okay, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, you much. are contesting under what political platform? Wow, that's interesting. I'm contesting under Zenith Labour Party. Why Zenith Labour Party? Wow, uh, I have gone through the philosophy of most of these parties gone through their constitution, I've tried to see what they are out for. And looking at Zeni Labour Party, I've come to understand that the party is youth friendly, uh, the party is accommodating, and it has the interests of the people at heart. So I chose this platform to contest for this position. So what will you do for your people if elected as a member of House of Assembly? Because uh, towards, I, I, I would like to take you towards uh, the issue of uh, uh, the anti gracing okay. and the crisis between the Fulani and the farmers, herdsmen and farmers. Yes. Because that local government you are about to present in your, that your constituency yes. is one of the most affected area well. when it has to do with uh, greasing. That's true. Cattle grazing. So what will you do to sustain or eradicate that issue of a uh, herdsman farmer's crisis? Well, thank you very much for that question. You see, my people are farmers. Understand? And uh, I believe for somebody to begin to come up with his own mode of farming, Okay, because they are also farmers in a way. Yeah. Okay, to come and destroy what somebody else has put on ground to also fend for himself is not proper. So I'm looking at the situation. Although at this level, this is at the state level, so there's really not so much one can do. But I, I'm thinking of a situation where the river banks, where uh, these people normally come through, we should be able to have what. Uh, the Excellency has come up with right now the, the, the Joint Tax Force to have them at these borders. The Livestock Guard. Yes, thank you, the Livestock Guard. Thank you very much, the Livestock Guard. I want a situation where we can have them at these borders, okay? These areas where these people penetrate to be able to, to, to come against, not in a hostile way anyway, but to prevent them from entering and destroying what is ours. And then, these areas we're talking about are uh, river Rhine areas, where they normally come through. If we have a situation where we can take advantage of these places and have sugarcane plantations there, they will help to stop these people from coming in. Because when those cows enter those places and uh, they begin to break those things, and sometimes they have those things split their nose trees and all of that, and you, the, the cow is such that their nose area where it's <laughs> always uh, cold and all of that. When you have those things pierce them, they wouldn't want to pass through those places again. So, one thing you have done that as a barrier, number one, you have the livestock uh, guards on ground, and then at the same time, the sugar cane can be used for marketing too. You market them and then bring revenue to, the, to that particular local government. Sugar can be produced from there and all of that. We can take advantage of all this. Yes. So what what is your take now on the open grazing, I mean the anti uh, open grazing law that was enacted by the state assembly and the governor of Benue State? Well, very welcome development. You see, for me coming on board, I'm not actually coming to see that I come up with something different from what is there. I have some ideas. I will come up anyway, but to also consolidate on what is already on ground. Okay. If something is good, there is no way shying away from it. Just support it. The fact that in this party, I also have somebody, flag bearer, Comrade Richard Bowen, who also has 
uh, the very good plans for the people of Benue State. I don't see any reason why if an idea was brought up under somebody else's dispensation, if we come on board, we shouldn't support it. So there's a very welcome development, and I, I think there is nothing wrong with that. There's really nothing wrong with that. He has followed the proper steps to ensure that uh, we, we have that law in force. And you know, when change comes, the first thing that happens is people react against it. But with time, I want to believe that uh, everything will, will take, uh, go into shape. Thank you so much. It's Thank been wonderful much. having you on Benue People's TV online. Thank so you can you leave us with some one or two words, uh, mostly for people of uh, your constituency? Wow, thank uh, you very so much. So will talk to them, vote for you, <laughs> anything like that? Just yes, because, yeah. yes. The good people of, uh, of Way West, they know me as their son. And uh, I think if you can just spare me more time, I will want to say some certain things to my people. Okay. You see, uh, I'm a linguist, and I understand what it means when when uh, people begin to lose their language, they are losing their culture as well, understand? I just came into the studio with some folk singers to come and sing and all of that. And these opportunities, these are talents people have. And uh, on, for me, I want to look for a, a way, uh, an avenue where I can help some of these youths to also bring out that talent in a traditional way. Children who have been born around from 2000 up to this point, some of these are our, our traditional way of life, the culture and all of that. Most of them don't know it because we have allowed the Western culture to get into us, seriously. So I think we can create avenues where they can come and showcase their talents. Uh, we can bring some of our our dances and songs that have gone extinct. We look for a situation where these things can come and be, we bring people that still have these things in force in their places to come up and uh, have them showcased. So that these young ones will learn from it and know this is how we started. Our culture shouldn't fade away. We should stay with it and ensure that we build it. And while you are doing this, you are also bringing about tourist attraction. People will move from various places to come and see what is going on. Look at the Keisha Shua that goes on uh, this. Uh, yeah. People leave their places on that particular day. In fact, it is such that there was, we had, uh, there was a convention we were supposed to do old boys in my secondary school. And just because of Keisha Shua, it was postponed. So that Benue people would gather there. Why? They are trying to make sure that our culture doesn't fade away. So we can also promote that in my constituency. That is one thing. So that the young people who have talents and all of that, we must not have everybody be a doctor or a lawyer. We can also have people who have interest in these areas to create a platform for them that they will be able to showcase their talents. And who knows? They will become our two faces, our, our, our how do you, these big boys all over there. Yeah. You understand? So that is one thing. Secondly, uh, I have also looked at uh, the situation of our universities, you understand? People are afraid of sending their girl child, to girl children to universities these days because uh, they feel they are going to be taken advantage of and all of that. Because of some of these things we have experienced, the lecturer saying, if you don't sleep with me, you will not pass. If you don't give this money, certain amount of money, you will not pass and all of that. I'm thinking of having uh, us come up with an independent academic complaint committee in all our high institutions where if a student feels that this, he or she is being victimized by a lecturer for not doing a particular thing that the lecturer doesn't want, they can, and you begin to see that the, his or her scores are being affected by that demand that he or she did not succumb to, they will now be able to go to this independent academic complaint committee to take up these cases invite these lecturers and ask them what the problem is and look for a way to resolve these things. Because this, these days, you don't know, a child, a girl child goes to school, you go to the exam officer and ask, why am I failing this paper? They don't have any explanation for you. They ask the lecturer, why is this happening? They don't have any explanation for you. But I believe if this committee, an academic complaint committee is set, just like we have INEC, yeah. in these higher institutions, they can take their problems to them 
okay, and have them uh, sorted out. That is it. And then uh, two more things quickly. Uh, we, when we had our independence, the focus was more on getting administrators. Okay, yeah. so you see people have been giving scholarships to go study public administration, this and that, local government management and all of that. But so that they can come and manage this society. You understand? Because the whites were here taking care of everything. When they left, we had to create a situation where people can come on board to run the administrative aspect of the country. You understand? So there were a lot of incentives and encouragement. There's someone graduates is giving a car, the B2 car and all of that to use. But these days, we have a lot of graduates everywhere. Just call for interview now and you will see hundreds and thousands of youths lined up for those jobs. So I'm looking at a situation where we can have a... I'm looking at a situation where we can have a, a, a skill acquisition center where young persons will no longer focus on white polar jobs again. They will go to these places, these skill acquisition centers, learn what they feel is of interest to them, okay? And upon graduation, they are empowered, and they go out there to fend for themselves. We are in your studio today. If we didn't have this knowledge, we won't have anywhere to come to. You understand? So, but if people are going, we, we have resource persons like you who come and train some, some young ones on production and all of that. When they move out, they can become of use to themselves. You understand? People will go there, learn, even if it's to weld, uh, do or force three jobs and all of that. Because I believe it's the man that makes the job and not the job that makes the man. Yeah. When you package your business very well, coming into this studio, nobody will look at this place and feel it somehow. Because you have packaged your business, you know what is there and you are giving, you are giving your best to it. So, uh, the focus more now should be on vocational education. You understand? Quality vocational education where people can become self-employed. I think that is where we should go towards. So at my level in my constituency, that is one thing I believe I am going to do. Have a very good skill acquisition center with very good resource persons and have them, have the, the youths there engaged. And at the end of the day, they come out well. Then finally, uh, Lost just like the message these persons, uh, the folk singers came to <laughs> to do in your studio. We used to have two constituencies. One was crapped out, and it's just remaining one. You understand? I'm looking at the situation where we can have the second one restored, so that we don't have issues of uh, we want to move the chairman to Mbakwa and the state assembly to Rav, so that it be balanced and all of that. If it is restored, we we'll have situations where. We have an assembly member this way, we have another assembly member this way representing the local government. Two constituencies were representing the same local government. So, once that is done, once that is done, we say two good heads are better than one. Whatever it is they are bringing from the state, okay, as the constituency allowance, is going to be put into that local government to make it better. And there will be a positive competition where somebody from Bakba is looking at the other state assembly member from Rav is doing very well. So the person feels challenged and begins to give his or her best into uh, his or her constituency. Understand? And then you you will notice that development will spring up rapidly. But where you don't have competition, everybody just goes there, feels that uh, I'm just the only one here. And then you just do the best you can. You can do, gather all the money they can gather and all of that. After the four years, it's like can be bigger and they move away. You understand? So, that is one thing I believe, by the grace of God, we are going to fight and bring it back. Take for instance, Guma. Just 10 council words. Okay? And uh, very soon, they are going to have the second uh, constituency restored. Okay? The matter constituency, the yeah, thing in Ushungu, has been restored in Oju. And all these places I'm talking about are, are less than the number of council wards we have. And even in terms of population. But why? Because the state assembly members that were sent there took that the bull by the horn, demanded for it, and it is being restored. 
15 council wards in Way West, and we have just one constituency. It's, it's, it's really sad, it's sad. Really yeah, very, very sad. So I think that is one area we need to look at. But to cap it up, I talked about restoration of constituency. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you asked the question about the anti open grazing law, yeah. uh, which I told you of measures that I feel if encouraged will, will really uh, ensure that these people don't get into our farms and destroy it. And then I also told you about the independent academic complaint committee that should be set up in the, fifth, uh, in the, in the high, high, high institutions. institutions. Uh -huh. And then also told you about the vocational center, yeah. the skill acquisition center, sorry, yes. where we can have the youths learn a skill and yeah. become self employed. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Uh, Thank you. It's nice much. having you. Thank you. I wish so you the best in the election. Thank you very much. God bless.